right, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst for Money and Markets with our weekly marijuana market update. Remember, you can check out the marijuana market update each and every week on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com, search for Money and Markets. We'll have the uh, green logo and uh, you can uh, just follow that and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get access to all of our videos and hit the notification bell underneath there so you get notified every time we put uh, we put one out. Don't forget, we love feedback as well. You can do that. Just email us at feedback at moneyandmarkets.com or you can leave a comment below down in the comments section. Now for this week's update, I wanna look at a company that many of you have written to me about. Vanya posted on our YouTube channel, Planet 13 Analysis. That's simple and to the point. Brett also said this, brilliant, Planet 13 Zoom. Not really sure what the extra Zoom is for, but it works. Love the enthusiasm. Armando also added, do a video on Planet 13. That's pretty straightforward. And uh, you know, I've answered, I'm gonna answer your request today and and because uh, there's clearly some positive sentiment around Planet 13 holdings that trades over the counter uh, under the ticker PLN uh, PLNHF. PLNHF is Planet Hold Planet 13 Holdings. First, let me talk a little bit about the company. Similar to last week's company, Liberty Health, Planet 13 is a cannabis company that originates basically in one state, Nevada. Liberty Health is in Florida. The Planet 13 is primarily based in Nevada, although the company does have a pair of dispensaries and some licensing in California. Now, despite only owning four total dispensaries, the company's product uh, is in about 33 store different dispensaries uh, that aren't necessarily owned by Planet 13 across the state of Nevada. It operates what it calls, quote, the world's largest cannabis store, in quote, a few steps away from the Las Vegas Strip in downtown Las Vegas. Uh, the company does plan to open another superstore sometime uh, in uh, the upcoming quarters in Santa Ana, California. Planet 13 Cannabis Entertainment Complex won Leafly's uh, Nevada Dispensary of the Year back in 2018. It's a, uh, and that superstore, which is massive, by the way, if you, if you have a chance to look at photos of it, uh, it's pretty impressive. It is a very big operation. Um, they've just recently added non-cannabis products to its retail store, such as apparel and things like that, uh, to kind of broaden the experience. It's expanding that sales floor in Las Vegas, adding cash registers uh, and new entertainment to the facility uh, as Las Vegas starts to rebound uh, from tourism headwinds they faced during the coronavirus uh, lockdowns. The entertainment portion of the, of the expansion to that area includes an 80-foot video wall. Not really sure what they're going to be showing, but that is a massive wall. Um, it's a, the, the expansion in Las Vegas is going to cost about $1.5 to $2.5 million and completed sometime in the first quarter of 2021. Now, in addition to that, Planet 13 has also acquired about 45,000 uh, square feet of space in Las Vegas that they're planning on using as a cultivation facility. That's got an overall cost of about $4.15 million. They're going to use $1.15 million for cannabis inventory and another $3 million for operating assets, licenses, equipment, facility improvements, and, and the like. Uh, it's, financed with, uh, it's financed that acquisition uh, with a sale of common shares and cash on hand. Now, in terms of brands, Planet 13 is very similar to Liberty Health. They have a lot of brands under their umbrella. They've got Medizin, M-E-D-I-Z-I-N. Uh, it's billed as a company's premium cannabis offer offering, and outside of that, it's basically medical cannabis. Uh, Trendy is a cannabis vaping product. They have Leaf and Vine, which is a disposable vaping product, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Purk Coffee, uh, which is P-U-R-C Coffee. That's basically just coffee. Not cannabis coffee, just coffee. And they sell that at their uh, retail location in Las Vegas. Plan to also sell it in uh, their uh, superstore when it's built in Santa Ana. Planet M is has various CMD, uh, CBD rather infused products. Uh, Dreamland Chocolates, just what it sounds. It's uh, various chocolate products that are infused with cannabis. And then you've got Ha Ha Gummies, which is THC infused gummies. So it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, and, and financially, I, I did a kind of a deep dive into this and, and the company seems to be uh, right in the midst of a pretty solid record breaking quarter. Um, it, Planet 13 reported preliminary Q3 2020 revenue of $22.8 million. That's a 110% increase over the same quarter a year ago. Its in-store revenue jumped 13% to around $18.5 million, and its Las Vegas Superstore served 1,600 customers a day with average sales of $124 per customer. That is pretty impressive. Uh, following lockdowns due to the coronavirus, Planet 13 also undertook delivering curbside sales, 
which are expected to be around $3.4 million for the quarter compared to just $295,000 in the same quarter a year ago. It also reported another $1 million in wholesale sales. This is basically the sales of their products to other dispensaries. Remember I said they're in 33 dispensaries across the state of Nevada, so they sell their product elsewhere. Their wholesale sales are basically their bottom line sales to these other dispensaries. Now, preliminary sales figures suggest that really barring any more lockdowns, Planet 13 could reach a million dollars in run rate revenue for the fourth quarter, which is actually pretty darn good considering it's very limited footprint. Well, one of the reasons for that is the company is set to open its medicine store uh, sometime in November, which should drive up medical cannabis sales. They closed it during the coronavirus crash. They're set to reopen it here sometime in the next month. But even with all that, the next year could be a breakout for Planet 13, I think. Um, it's Santa Ana Super Store is expected to some open sometime either late Q1, early Q2 of 2021. Uh, and some analysts actually believe that could bring an additional $50 million in revenue alone. I, I think that might be a high target, but it's not necessarily unrealistic. Uh, barring any significant issues, Planet 13 uh, could see revenues in fiscal 2021 of around $140 million, which would pretty much double their expected revenue for 2019. Um, is it possible? I think doubling may be a bit of an oversell. Um, I, there's, got, there's a lot of things that have to fall in line for that to happen, but I do suspect they will see a nice revenue bump in 2021. Another thing to consider is that the company currently has $31 million in cash on its books that could be used uh, for future scaled operations into cultivation uh, or maybe even expansion into other markets. Uh, growing more of its own product would do wonders uh, to help the company produce a wider revenue and EBITDA, EBITDA margin. Uh, now analysts project the company to have revenue of about $73.4 million uh, in, in fiscal 2020. Uh, with about 12.1 million in earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization, which is EBITDA. Uh, with the potential for an even stronger 2021, the company's revenue could be around 134 million maybe, uh, with about 40.4 million in EBITDA, which is a nice range to be in, especially for a cannabis company. Now, as for Planet 13 shares, they've had a nice run. They had a nice run from about May until August, as you'll see in the, in the, in the chart. Its shares jumped about 472% from a low in March to a high of $4 and a penny in August. But after that growth, uh, the share price pulled back about 32% to about $2.71 by the end of September. However, you can see by the chart, and if you're listening audibly, you know, I'll tell you, uh, the stock started another run up after that drop and is now very close to that 401 high that it had two months ago. Strong preliminary earnings for the third quarter is likely to spark, uh, maybe an additional spark for that uptrend, and I think they could reach that 401 mark again. If we look at Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell's six-factor green zone rating system, we see Planet 13 actually ranks, ranks an overall uh, 18, uh, which means it's a very high-risk stock. Um, and a big part of that is because Adam's system considers Planet 13 a very low growth company. It actually ranks a two on growth. However, the company is green in momentum with a 67 and size at 71. Uh, again, we have to keep in mind this is a cannabis stock. And I've told you this from time and time, time and time again, that cannabis stocks have to be looked at a little bit differently, especially if you're very uh, strong investing in cannabis. Uh, you, what, what Adam's system does is basically compares all stocks against each other. So it'd basically be like comparing, uh, you know, Planet 13 against Amazon. Not necessarily a fair comparison considering, you know, Amazon has way different metrics, is much bigger, uh, and, and has a, a whole different ground set of, of, how, of how their momentum is judged, their quality, their growth, their value, and, and, and the like. Uh, and, and volatility is almost a given uh, considering it's a cannabis stock. So that means you know, we have to look at the fundamentals of a company to determine if it's a potential buy. And the way I see it, Planet 13 has all the ingredients in place to really put itself into the green, but a few things have to happen first before, that can, before we can realize that. They have to expand into California without a hitch. That's a given. They have to open their Santa Ana Superstore without any problems at all. And, and, and that could be difficult, but I think it's doable. That expansion has to yield fruit in terms of revenue almost immediately. Uh, you know, they, they can't wait around on just sinking a bunch of money into the superstore and not see some sort of financial return uh, within a quarter or two of that, actually of that opening actually happening. The company also has to widen its revenue to EBITDA spread uh, and bring its earnings per share up out of negative territory. Right now, its earnings per share is right around, you know, probably negative six cents per share. Um, I think it's definitely possible, and they widen that spread. 
Uh, I definitely think it's feasible, but I don't think we'll see it until uh, 2021. We probably won't see it in 2020, even with a good third quarter and a possibly good fourth quarter. Um, I do like the superstore plan the company has, um, especially in a tourist attraction like Las Vegas. I've seen pictures of this and it is, it is pretty impressive to see. It looks more like a mall store than it does your typical cannabis dispensary, which are typically very small, uh, you know, not necessarily mom and pop operations, but they're usually small and square footage. This is massive. Um, and continuing to expand its offerings there uh, is a great base of operations. Uh, but the biggest question mark I do have is related to its expansion in California. Uh, it has the potential to do very well, but California is a competitive cannabis state. Um, it, they offer very limited licensing uh, to serve a very large cannabis population. And, and so I think it's going to be, uh, there could be some headwinds there depending on the right foot, the, the foot that uh, the Planet 13 comes out on with the Santa Ana operation. I think there could be some initial struggles for Planet 13 in California, but I think they've got a pretty proven way to overcome those obstacles. The company has parts in place to reach $100 million in revenue and, or, or even more, uh, but in 2021, not this year. So if you're looking to invest in Planet 13, you have to realize bigger gains won't happen until next year and maybe even beyond that. You can't expect to be there to be a big boost in your por por portfolio in 2020. Um, I, I think now uh, is a good price point to get into. Uh, it, it has the potential to drive up to that 401 resistance level, maybe even break through it, depending on how things go towards the end of the year. Um, but right now would be your optimum time to probably jump into Planet 13 if you haven't already. So that's my analysis on Planet 13 Holdings. Uh, if you do have any questions about it, please uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, before I go, I want to update uh, you about my cannabis watch list on moneyandmarkets.com. I added a new stock to the watch list last week, and it's actually started off pretty well. I added Turning Point Brands Incorporated, trades under the, the New York Stock Exchange ticker of TPB, a little more than a week ago, and it's actually up 6% since I made it, since I put it on the list. Uh, another one of our watch list stocks, Schweitzer Malden International, uh, which trades on the New York Stock Exchange under SWM, has gained more than 11% since I recommended it in September. That's really about all for me this week. I'd like to say I, I, I still love the feedback that we get uh, yeah, day in and day out on our YouTube channel and through email. Remember the email address if you do have a comment or question or something you'd like me to look at in terms of a stock or a cannabis stock or trend is feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We'll flash the email address below on the video and put it in the show notes as well. Uh, don't forget to email me. Let me know why you're interested in cannabis stocks. I'd love to read what you have to say. I've had some great feedback and actually commented on some of that already. Uh, it kind of helps my team and I kind of really hone our focus in, on, in terms of what kind of content we want to provide you both uh, on our YouTube channel and on Money and Markets. Make sure to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel at Money and Markets and make sure you hit that notification bell. And that way you get alerted every time we, uh, we uh, uh, update and have a new video that comes out. Uh, and the same goes for our Bull and the Bear podcast and our week ahead, all of which will be coming out this week as well. Uh, we usually post those videos about a, about a day or so before uh, they come out on Money Market, so you can be first uh, to get uh, all that information. Uh, I'd like to, uh, like to welcome all of our rash of subscribers that we've had. We've had a lot of subscribers jump in in the last couple months. I want to welcome you all to, uh, to our channel. And if you do have any ideas on videos you'd like to see, by all means, man, let me know. Feedback at moneymarkets.com. We'd love to hear your input and what you have to say. Coming up this week, we'll have more on the Bull and the Bear podcast, uh, as well as our Money Markets Week Ahead, so make sure you stay tuned for all of that. Uh, also, check moneymarkets.com each and every day for new content. Uh, we hope to provide you safe and profitable investment information uh, so that you can make the smartest decisions with your, with your investment capital. Uh, so I'm Matt Clark, Research Analyst for Money and Markets and the host of the Bull and the Bear podcast. Until next time, everyone, safe trading.